Hi, my name's Benji Claus, and welcome to Dice vs Cards. So it's that time of year again, ladies and gentlemen, and we're here with our Christmas Gift Guide 2019 edition, where we're going to be giving you 10 gift ideas for friends and family in no particular order in four different categories. So we've talked already about lightweight games, medium weight games, and heavyweight games. And this, the final video in our gift idea series, we're gonna be giving you ideas for stocking fillers. So as you'd imagine, these are gonna be small portable games that you can give to any of your loved ones that can then be straight out of the box, quick to the table, no matter where you're playing. So let's get to the list. Archaeology, the new expedition. We start this list with some treasure hunting, set collection style. You'll be given some starting bunts of course, but it'll be up to you to find more goodies and then trade them at the marketplace to increase the value of the sets of treasure you can collect. But rest assured, it's not all easy breezy, because there are those, both those thieves in your midst ready to steal a key part of your collection and sandstorms that are just begging to decimate your hand of swag. Once you've pushed your luck as far as you're prepared to, collecting as much of a set as you can, it's then time to sell off your bounty to the museum. Whilst on paper there isn't much to this game, like all the great and the good, this one just scratches that itch and gets you coming back for more. Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. This slim down take on the staple Euro classic, bringing roll and write to the region of Burgundy, just hits all the right notes. The familiar fundamentals from Big Daddy Burgundy translate really well to this format. Your starting position on that Ickle map will help provide a different experience every time you get this to the table. There's just the right amount of choices to make on each turn to ensure that this game never stalls. You're all taking your turns at the same time, spreading your control over your board, and the quicker you control areas of the board over the course of three rounds, the more you'll top up those higher scores. To help you, you'll be gaining access to certain actions that will help you to manipulate the dice that have been rolled. Just a great all round roll and write. Fantasy Realms. Probably the biggest box on this list, but by a very minor margin. And you should have no trouble squeezing this bad boy into a super stretchy stocking. Trust me. But you ask why you're recommending such an ugly game? Well, if you've ever heard that beauty lies within, this is the board game version of that, period. This is absolutely positively rummy on steroids. Draw a card, discard a card. Except here, the sets that you're looking to have in your hand at the end of the game are much more complex. There are so many different winning combinations for you to gain a bunch of points. And the challenge of beating your high score makes this a highly replayable game. Not only that, I would challenge you to find a better game that you spend almost as much time scoring as you do playing. This is a top, top game. Fox in the Forest. Disclaimer, this game will not teach you why the fox is in the forest. It just is. Live with it. But as trick-taking games go, this is a cutesy little delight. The artwork in this game is stunning and brings the game to life. The core mechanics are straightforward as you'd expect from a trick-taking game, but there are enough inflections and special abilities on cards to make this a trick-taking game with bells and whistles, witches and woodcutters, and snowflakes and swans. There's enough in this box to ensure that this is a definite step up in terms of theme and overall gameplay to those square games that gave this genre its name. The question remains, however, if a fox screams or barks in the forest but no one is there to hear it, does it actually make a sound? Hero Realms or Star Realms? Take your pick. You like yourself some fantasy with wizards and warriors? Or you prefer your fiction science based with spaceships and star bases? This is basically the same game at heart so pick your poison because this game is a pure deck builder. Not much in the way of wells and bissels, just good old fashioned upgrading your deck through buying cards in a communal marketplace and taking those cards and ramping up your resource generation and damage dealing capabilities. It's then a race or game of attrition dependent on your playstyle to be the last player standing. This is in some ways a travel sized core product because both versions now have quite a few options to expand this game. 
giving your character some identity or even making a cooperative gameplay experience. This is a pretty low risk shout, so don't be shy, take your pick and never look back. Gone Shon Clever Oh that's pretty clever indeed. So clever you really need to play this a few times to rack up some high scores and this is certainly a game that encourages that practice. Yes it's a win or lose affair but getting the highest score imaginable is just as key to proving how clever your inner gamer can be. So is there a game in here somewhere? Yep and it's another Roll and Riot. I know I know but Roll and Riot comes in small boxes, shoot me. Whilst this is only a hybrid simultaneous action game, it's not one where you're hanging around too long for your opponent to go. And although it can get quite tricky figuring out your best play, there's very little not to like about this game, and the feeling of elation you get from chaining bonuses is 100% real. One Deck Dungeon, Forest of Shadows. The most complex game on this list. Not that that says much, but there's a great deal of game in this small, small box. From the dice covering mechanic found in games like Elder Sign, to the feel of a dungeon crawler in the vein of those old 2D sword swinging and spell slinging video games of yesteryear. But make no mistake, this ain't no dated game. Playing equally well as a solo or two player affair, you're going to be levelling up your characters, giving you more dice to deal with those not so sweet perils and face smashers that are going to come at you through all levels of the dungeon. It's then big boss fight at the end where you kill it or it kills you. Simple and straightforward but challenging to boot. This is value for money in a box. Tides of Madness or Tides of Time? What's this, another pick'em game? Right, so this time it's Cthulhu or historical. Although the former does have a minor mechanical addition in the form of some madness tokens. Of course there's madness, it's HP Lovecraft. Alas, this is a card drafting and set collection game, and the drafting element is the real draw here. You can play real down and tactically dirty in your pursuit of winning this game, but come on, why not just focus on your own score? It is your choice either way. There's just the right amount of game here as you try and enhance those sets over the course of three rounds to give you the most points. There's a great deal of synergy in the cards you can draft and there's also a tangible sense of pushing your luck in trying to obtain those sets. All in all, a great deal of fun. Simples. Tiny Epic Quest you could argue that the designers and publishers of this game were on their own acid trip uh, quest when conceiving this game. This is the epitome of finickety. New word, you won't find it in the Oxford English. Basically the pitch went something like this. We're going to fit tiny arrows, spell books and swords on a tiny weapons rack and then fit a winning game around making everything look like it got shrunk to a 10x1 scale. And you know what? It works pretty darn well. It's by no means groundbreaking, it's one part exploration, one part adventure questing game that keeps things interesting enough, but really the compactness is the selling point for this game. You won't normally find games of this type in a travel size, and there are also a bunch of variations of this game out there now, so if this hits the, yep, yeah, that sounds like something I'd need in my collection box, then go right ahead. Welcome to the dungeon. Oh, put your luck on a dungeon delve, goblins blocking your way. What? Look, I get one sing song in every video. It's in the contract. Make your peace with it. This is a quick pace, push your luck game where you're almost gambling with your opponents how many pieces of armour and equipment can be taken away from the hero and still successfully make it through the dungeon alive. Each dungeon card is numbered, which denotes the strength of the enemies you'll be facing, but each of your hero's equipment has the potential to fully negate these enemies. So whilst you really are going full steam ahead into the unknown, there's a great deal of satisfaction gained from risking it all and getting out alive. So as to not break the sequence, there's also welcome back to the dungeon game to consider. But either way, as you can see this is a beautifully crafted game and is very swift to get both to the table and back in the box. We really do hope we've given you some great gift ideas for this Christmas and if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with what we do.